to show you how to use the static test stand to do your water rocket testing for this specific impulse. What we're going to do is be testing in your two liter Coke bottle how much energy is going to be converted into thrust during the expulsion of one liter of water and pressurized air in the remaining part of the volume. So to do that, we have a test stand that we've developed with very expensive industry quality load cells. These load cells are meant specifically with piezo crystal technology to measure very quickly changing forces. These forces are transmitted from the rocket to the test stand through a top plate. This top plate is attached to two load cells one on each side, measuring the forces. Those will be labeled in the VI as force zero and force one. Each of those load cells is supported on two aluminum blocks and then a bottom support plate that has a hole in the center and the hole in the center is where the water and air is expulsed into the drain in the bottom. So the first thing that you need to do is fill up your two liter bottle with 1,000 milliliters. You can choose to measure that by volume. We have graduated cylinders for 1,000 milliliters. Or you can do that by weight with a scale. We have digital scale that you can use to tear out the weight of the empty bottle and then add 1,000 grams of water to that. The next step, once you have the water filled into your two liter bottle, is to thread on the attachment that will connect to the test stand. This attachment, it has threads that match a typical Coke bottle. It has to be a Coke bottle because Coke bottles have a very specific tolerance on their flange and threads. Any other manufacturer can deviate from those tolerances and do not fit with our test stand. Notice on this test stand bracket, that there is a red dot. There's also a red dot on the top of the test stand. Those need to line up so that the tolerances of the plate match the tolerances of the rest of the test stand. So the first thing to notice is where that dot is located because you need to turn that upside down and then you'll need to line it up when you place it into the test stand. You'll want to thread on this bracket onto the two liter bottle. Again, noticing where your red dot is. You can oftentimes do that by feeling for that red dot. It's located in this corner right now, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that. And I'm gonna attach the rest of my air pressurization system. That consists of an air line and a quick connect that'll go to our air tank, a rubber stopper and a check valve. This white check valve allows the air to be pushed into the bottle in one direction. There's an arrow that indicates the direction that flow is allowed, and none of the air and water can come back the other direction. If you notice any water leaking into this line during testing, that is a problem, and you'll need to let one of the lab assistants or myself know so that we can replace your tubing and check valve as they do wear out over time. Another important step to add to your checklist is before you place the stopper into the two liter bottle, you need to coat that with soap. It, that will allow the stopper to remove cleanly and quickly when we launch the static test and not have the stopper get stuck in the bottle and actually interfere with some of your test results. We want that to be a nice frictionless removal of the stopper. So you take and put some soap all the way around that rubber stopper, coating it nice and evenly. Place that rubber stopper into the two liter bottle. You don't need to press down too hard. The pressure will be put in place by the rest of our assembly. We have some washers to distribute the force as well as a thrust bearing. So we 
to get that all the way up through the tubing here. Currently, we have two washers and one thrust bearing. The thrust bearing, shown in blue, has all of these little roller bar ball bearings that allow the launch plate to be removed very quickly and easily without a lot of friction. So this thrust bearing allows for nice linear translation in this direction. The next key step is to take, take this launch plate and install it. It needs to be stall, installed in the opposite direction as that red marker. So that red marker is in this corner. My launch plate needs to come in this corner. It'll be evident when I install the rest of this into the test stand so that we have this corner lined up with the test stand and the launch plate can remove out in the direction that I'm standing. There's two different orientations of the launch plate. So this smooth surface here is preferred for smooth operation with the thrust bearing. We can also, if you'd like, add a little bit of soap to each of these interfaces on the plate. They're going to contact the ridges inside the rest of the test stand. So you can see I've added soap on this interface where this launch plate is going to slide. And then the other side of the launch plate goes on top of the thrust bearing. This is our entire assembly ready to install into the test stand. At this point, I'm just going to check for alignment, make sure everything looks good. Very important step that a lot of students have trouble with or get wrong the first time around is proper routing of the tubing and the launch cord. You need to route those before you install this launch plate into the rest of the test stand. Let's first start with the launch cord. The launch cord needs to go through the large square hole and then out the side so that when we pull that launch plate, it comes out cleanly from the test stand. If you have any questions about that, since it might be hard to see in the video, you can always come and look at the hardware during lab time. The next piece that we're going to route through is the airline. The airline should go through the square hole and the circular hole. So one way to put that in your checklist, to reiterate, the launch string goes just through the square and out the side. The airline goes through the square and the circle, out the bottom, and then out the side. Hopefully that makes sense, and if not, again, come look at the hardware firsthand during lab time. Now you will flip this over, and the water should not come out of the two liter bottle, or you have a problem with your stopper installation, and you'll have to start over. Continue to route the launch cord and the airline through the test stand. Install the side opposite of the red dot first under the clamps. It fits better that way. Making sure that those clamps are open so that you can actually install that. And then check for your airlines and your launch cords to make sure that are free and they haven't gotten smashed during the installation or pinched during the installation. At this point, I have to really reiterate, this is one of the key steps in your checklist. Do not forget, you can even put it on there twice, to clamp down these red clamps. There are four of them. These clamps are the only thing that are preventing your rocket from taking off during the test. And when it takes off during the test, it'll take the entire launch plate with it. That's a pretty heavy object. When that happens, it often comes out, hits one of the clamps, and then goes sideways, which is why all students have to be away from the side locations 
and be ready in case of a faulty checklist procedure that misses these clinics. Every year we have some students that do it, but I'd really like to get to the point where we don't have any students forgetting this. So in your checklist, double, triple check whatever you need to do to make sure all four clamps are securely clamped down. Not halfway clamped down, but all the way pressed as far as you can push that red knob. So we'll clamp all four of those down. Now our test stand cannot be separated and our two liter bottle cannot be pulled up. Another good way to check that in your checklist is to pull on the two liter bottle and make sure it doesn't remove. Double checks to make sure your clamps are installed properly and working. Next step is for the compressed air line. For the compressed air, we will typically be using this air tank or we may provide to you an airline if the weather is nice and we can run it from outside. And the air tank is filled for you so you don't have to worry about that part of the procedure. Should be between 40 and 80 PSI. If it drops below 40, you're not gonna be able to provide 40 PSI to the bottle. So you need to ask one of the lab assistants or myself to get the tank recharged. On the tank, there are some important valves. There's a red stop valve at the end of the hose and a yellow valve at the base of the hose. If the valve is perpendicular, it is in the off position. If the valve is in line, it's in the on position. The reason why there's no air coming out right now is that the yellow valve is still off. If we open the yellow valve, air will start to come out the hose. We also have a accurate pressure gauge and then a pressure regulator. The pressure regulator also has an air gauge, but it's not as accurate. So trust the large gauge for the actual pressure coming out of the line. To set the pressure to the desired PSI, you pull out on the knob of the regulator. Notice the pressure on the output. Make sure in your checklist to stop the output valve line, making sure that it's perpendicular, because we're gonna hold the pressure in this line and measure on the gauge what pressure we are capturing. And then open the yellow valve at the base of the tank and check to see what pressure you have in your airline, which is set by this regulator. You can dial that up or down by going counterclockwise and clockwise with this regulator knob. Also keep in mind that if you are decreasing the pressure, oftentimes some pressure is still captured inside the line, so you should vent that just to be sure that the actual pressure is red at that point. Also works nicely to go below the desired temperature, uh, sorry, pressure, not temperature, and dial that up to the desired pressure. So I'm gonna dial that up to 40, double check that with a little venting, and now we are ready to pressurize our rocket at 40 PSI. Use the quick connect on the airline, pull back on the outer cylinder, press that in to connect your airline to the air tank, and then start to pressurize your rocket. To pressurize your rocket, at this point, since we're dealing with pressurized gases, especially, and the water bottle rocket that could explode and other parts and pieces that could come off of the test stand, you need to wear safety glasses. So let me go get my safety glasses. Making sure that you have your safety glasses on. Notify the rest of your team members that you'll be pressurizing. So say pressurizing the rocket. Make sure the yellow valve is open. You're holding the pressure with the red valve. And then slowly 
You don't want to go too fast. Releasing that air into the body. Allow a few minutes, actually I shouldn't say a few minutes, a few seconds to let the air populate into the bottle to make sure that you get all of that captured air into the rocket. Once the air bubbles have slowed down and there really are very few air bubbles left to be pressurizing in the rocket, you can close off that airline Make sure to disconnect at this point. Make sure you have that closed off. If you didn't, you let all the air out of the tank. And just for safe measure, close both valves to make sure the air tank is completely closed off. Then make sure to move the air tank out of the splash zone because the regulator cannot get wet. It's bad for the regulator. At this point, you need to coordinate with your indoor team members who are operating the BI, and we'll have a separate video for the BI operations. And you will coordinate with them so that they can zero the load cells. And then right after they zero the load cells, because you only have five seconds from the time you zero the load cells to take accurate dynamic data from the sensors, you coordinate with your indoor personnel. They say the sensors are zeroed. Then you start a three, two, one. And release the clamp by pulling on the string and release all the pressurized air and water out of the water rocket. And that thrust will be measured as a function of time using the lab UVI. If you have any questions, please ask myself or one of the lab assistants. Thank you.